listen to Jesus? I am, but I am, not will be. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me, though he die, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth on me shall never die. Believest thou this? And now the preaching of the gospel with James Watkins. Behold, I send my messenger, and he shall prepare my way before me, and the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant whom ye desire, behold, he cometh, saith Jehovah. But who shall abide the day of his coming? He shall be as a refiner's fire, as fuller's soap. He shall sit as a refiner. That's from Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. This is the voice of a prophet who lived in an evil time. But out of the darkness of sin and shame that surrounded him, he saw the light of a dawning day, the coming of the Christ and the nature of his work. He shall sit as a refiner. The Lord Jesus Christ is a purifier. He is a refiner. Uh, I'm aware of this, of course, just the simple statement in Luke chapter 12 at verse 2. He said, There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, or hid that shall not be made known. Then Jesus Christ is the great refiner. Man is the gold. Now, in the process of refining gold, we see it in three stages. Gold and the rough. The pure metal and the dross is mixed in the ore that uh, comes from the earth. An interesting analogy. As a matter of fact, uh, quite suitable uh, for man. In his moral makeup, man is comprised of two conflicting elements. Isn't that what the Apostle Paul is telling us? Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 at verse 16. He said, Wherefore we faint not, but though our outward man is decaying, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is for the moment, worketh for us more and more exceedingly an eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And we know that if the earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Paul is telling us that there is the physical outward man, there is the inward spiritual man, and of course the Lord seeks to refine us, enabling us to place the emphasis on that which is eternal, not upon the temporary. Uh, this old body will last for a very brief period of time. And then man is governed by one principle or another. That is, the desires of the flesh or the will of him who has provided for our happiness and welfare. Christ seeks to refine. He enables me to understand where to place the emphasis. I remember that Paul said in Romans chapter 8 at verse 6, the mind of the flesh is death, or oh, but the mind of the spirit is life and peace, placing the emphasis where it should be. You see, he also tells us that the natural man receiveth not the things of God, their foolishness to him, and he cannot know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Now he also warns in Galatians 5 at verse 17 that the spirit lusteth against the flesh, and the flesh against the spirit, so that you may not do the things uh, that you would. So man is comprised of two conflicting elements. We are spiritual, made in the image and the likeness of God. We are immortal souls, clothed in very temporary flesh. And since the transgression of Adam and Eden and the fall of the human family, it is the easiest thing in the world to be governed by what we see in this immediate world, to be concerned with the desires of the flesh, to fulfill only those things that have to do with this material realm. And yet 
when we stop to think about it, it's quite well known to all thoughtful people that I won't be here very long. No, we come into this old world, and we function for a brief period, and we pass. It is appointed until man wants to die. After this, the judgment, Hebrews 9 at verse 27. So placing the emphasis properly is vital, and this is what the Lord seeks to instill within our hearts. He seeks to separate the pure metal from the dross, and there is gold in man. Oh, there's no question about that. And Jehovah God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Verse 27 of Genesis chapter 1. So there is gold in man. There's uh, no question about that. We're the offspring of God. You remember that Paul on the Areopagus, uh, Mars Hill, uh, recorded in Acts chapter 17 as he addressed the Athenian fathers. He quoted one of their poets in verse 28 of Acts 17, and he said, Even as certain of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Being then the offspring of God, we ought not to think of the Godhead as like unto gold or silver or precious stone, graven by art or device of man. Why, certainly not. We are made in the image and the likeness of God. There is gold in man. There is something good in the very worst of men, something worth saving, something worth redeeming. And that's why Jesus came into this world, to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19 at verse 10, man is lost, he is alienated from God uh, through sin. And Christ came to provide a remedy for that which separates us from our Father. Made in the image and the likeness of God, we are also His offspring, gold, something good in the worst of men. Oh, but uh, just so, there is dross in man also. Now, God gave the gold. Man added uh, the dross. Uh, No question. Just as there is good in the very worst of men, there is evil in the very best of men. The Lord wants to refine He wants to separate, to uh, distinguish between the two. In every soul, there may be conflicting emotions. Uh, There may be mixed desires. And the Lord wants to refine us. So then there's gold in the rough, uh, the pure metal and the dross mixed in the ore. And it's interesting that the refiner does not throw away the ore, it's simply because the gold is mixed with the dross. No, no. He seeks to purify. He seeks to separate uh, the two. So we see gold in the crucible. And just as the refiner of that precious metal uh, seeks to separate the pure from the impure, so it is with our Lord. But how does the refiner uh, separate the gold uh, from the dross? He does it through excessive heating. Oh, and Christ wants to separate the pure gold within the heart of man from the material temporary gross, and he does it with the fire of his word. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5 at verse 14, God said, I'll make my word in thy mouth fire, and this people as wood. Oh, and in Jeremiah 23, verse 29, he said, Is not my word a fire and a hammer that breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things? So the fire of God's word, let me suggest to you that it is a malice-consuming fire. Purifying, not at all pleasant, and we will observe that. A malice-consuming fire, this word of the Lord, Yes, you recall the Lord said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 23, If you bring your gift to the altar, and there remember that thy brother hath aught against thee, leave thy gift at the altar, go first and be reconciled to thy brother, then come and offer thy gift. Uh, Lord, you, you mean if I come to the altar in uh, the form or disposition of, of worship, and I remember that I have something against my brother, I should go and make it right? No, 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 that's not what he said. No, no. You bring your gift to the altar, and you remember that your brother has aught against you. 
Well, someone may reason, and that's what he's seeking to purify. We reason from the standpoint of uh, the flesh and its uh, selfishness. Uh, That's his task. I mean, he has something against me. Lord, I don't have anything against him. Then it's his initiative. He should make the move. He should... That isn't Christianity. Why did Christ come to this world? Well, we've already noticed, Luke 19.10, to seek and to save uh, the lost. Uh, But what did the lost do to give him a feeling of obligation to provide uh, for our redemption? Nothing. Well, when he came into the world, as you read his word, what do you find him doing for himself? Nothing. Why did he come? To save me. Him who knew no sin, he made to be sin on our behalf, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 21. So then Christ came to give himself to redeem my soul. That's right. And I call myself a Christian. Oh, then the Christian has the privilege of serving his fellow man. That's what Christianity is all about, reaching out to the lost with the truth of God. Sacrifice? Why, certainly. Christ sacrificed. He gave his life in the terrible death of crucifixion uh, to redeem my soul. And so I am to reach out to my fellow man. You bring your gift to the altar. You come in preparation for the worship of God. You remember that your brother has something against you. Hey, he shouldn't have that negative attitude. Could cause him to be lost. Oh, then I need to go and check into this thing and do what I can to help him to better understand our relationship one with the other. So then I am to take of my time, uh, make a sacrifice, uh, put forth the effort to help my brother to better understand his relationship in life. That's what Christ did. Uh, That's why he came. And so the word of the Lord is a malice consuming fire. And I need to appreciate that. Yes, but uh, more than that, the fire of God's Word consumes the lustful attitude that characterizes the old physical man. And bear in mind, he's seeking to separate the pure metal from uh, the dross. In Matthew chapter 5, 27 and 28, he said, You've heard it said of them of old time, Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto thee, Whoso looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his own heart. Under the law of sin and death, God looked on the overt act. Oh, but under the law of the Spirit, God looks upon the heart. A purifying flame, this Word of God. You know, some people, and I heard of one gentleman who uh, dealt with uh, pornographic material. Uh, brought this up uh, on his personal computer, and oh, but he said, now, this is private. Nobody else is there. said, I'm not affected. What are you talking about? You're corrupting your heart. You are corrupting your mind. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You are what you are in your relationships with your fellow man by virtue of what you hold in your heart. You can't feed your mind on filth and be pure in your relationship with God and man. The refining fire of God's Word removes this thing of uh, fleshly lust and inordinate uh, desire. When we order our lives by the Word of God, then as Paul said, of course, we treat the younger women as sisters, the older women as mothers and those about us, our brothers uh, in Christ. A marvelous disposition of heart and mind when the purifying process is complete uh, that enables me to be Christ-like in my view of my fellow creatures. It is a uh, lust-consuming fire. But you know, uh, this word that uh, purifies uh, is also a uh, greed-consuming fire, is it not? You recall also in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 6, uh, verse 19, Jesus said, Lay not up for yourself treasure upon the earth, where moth and rust consume, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, 
where neither moth nor rust doth consume, where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where thy treasure is, there will thy heart be also. Let's notice that a little more particularly. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth. You know, on occasion, someone says, well, now it's wrong uh, to have money. You, you shouldn't uh, accumulate uh, material goods. Uh, that's not what the Lord is saying. He's not saying that it's wrong for me to have a little laid up for a rainy day or to, through diligent, uh, honest labor, uh, get my property paid for. Uh, the Lord doesn't care how much money you have. You see, <clears throat> money is neither good or bad. Money is a medium of exchange. Well, now someone says, just a minute, preacher, money is a root of a woe, 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 woe. No, 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 no. First Timothy 6, verse 12. And this is what the Lord is saying right here in this Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Now notice what the Lord is saying. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust consume, where thieves break through and steal. Is he saying it's wrong to have? No, 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 no. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth consume, where thieves do not break through nor steal. It is uh, where you place the emphasis in life. The purifying fire of God's Word enables me to understand who I am. A physical being in a physical world with physical needs? No. No, no. I am a spiritual being passing through this temporary arrangement, and I will live forever, either in heaven in the divine presence or in the fire prepared for the devil and his angels. I cannot cease to be. Oh, then I need to place the emphasis where it belongs. Upon the material? No. Upon the spiritual. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust consume, where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth consume, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Oh, but his point is in verse 21, the next verse. For where thy treasure is, there will thy heart be also. What are you really interested in in this life? Now, as the great refiner, Jesus seeks through the fire of His Word to enable me to place the emphasis where it belongs. Friend, if I put it on the physical, I give up already. It's uh, practically uh, gone. It's not uh, the things of this life. It's not the material goods that we may uh, accumulate or possess. No, no. It is my relationship to the Lord uh, that counts, the purifying process of God's Word. But you know, God's uh, Word, the fire of His Word, uh, purifies also in the elimination of the pretense, a pretense-consuming fire. You remember He said in Matthew chapter 6, uh, verses 1 and 2, uh, we're not to do our alms, our giving uh, before men. Uh, now, I remember that he said, uh, Matthew 23, verse 23 of the Pharisees, Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites! You tithe mint, anise, and cumin, and uh, leave undone the weight of your matters of the law, love, justice, and mercy. Oh, now these you ought to have done, not to have left the other undone. What did he say there? Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them, flaunting our righteousness, as many of those Pharisees did, uh, rattle the uh, large amount of money that they're going to put into the coffers to take care of the poor, while at the same time their hearts are impure, and they are robbing the widows and the orphans. They are rascals actually, oh, but on the surface. Uh, they manifest uh, themselves in a light that appears to be spiritual, uh, sacrificial uh, in nature. Take heed that you do not your righteousness before men. This word enables me to understand that it is from the heart that I serve the Lord. And I do what I do because that's what the Lord wants me uh, to do. 
we're not to be righteous over much. You remember Ecclesiastes 7, verse 16. Uh, you can be too righteous. <laughs> no, no. You're not to flaunt your righteousness. True righteousness is shown in the exact opposite way, in humility. It doesn't uh, advertise itself. It shows in kindness and due regard for our fellow man and sacrifice for his good and the exemplification of righteous principle in my demeanor, my speech, my conduct so that he thereby observing the example can be edified. It's not a thing to brag about. It's not a thing to be flaunted. It's not simply to demonstrate uh, before men that I'm a righteous, uh, no, 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 no. Separating the pure metal from the dross, this fire of God's Word is a pretense consuming flame. But you know, it's also a fire that devours the, devours the critical disposition of mind and heart. In Matthew chapter 7, you recall, the Lord said uh, with regard to my attitude toward uh, my fellow man, judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Oh, just, just a moment, Lord. Uh, we are made in the image and the likeness of God. Uh, that's correct. Uh, God is a spirit, John 4, 24, and a spirit doesn't have flesh and bone, verse 39, Luke chapter 24. That's correct. So we don't look like God. Uh, then in what way are we made in God's image and God's likeness? You are a rational, immortal spirit possessed of free moral agency. Yes, you are a reasoning creature. You are a judgmental creature. And you exercise judgment every day, almost every moment of every day. Is that uh, large or small? Is this uh, black or white? Is this good or bad? I must exercise judgment. Now, sometimes people get the idea that the Lord is saying in Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 1 and 2, that we're not to judge. Well, then you'd have to die. You, you couldn't live in this world. You'd get killed. Is that truck coming down the road and at a high rate of speed? Do I have time to get across? If you don't reason, you'll likely step out in front of it, you know. Uh, there is judgment. Oh, yes. And uh, matters in which we must exercise that judgment every day. No question. That's not what the Lord's saying. What did He say? Judge not that you be not judged, for with what judgment you judge, you shall be judged. Oh, then I need to hear John chapter 7, verse 24. Judge not according to appearance, but judge righteous judgment. Sure, you're going to judge, but always give the other fellow the benefit of the doubt. Never make negative judgments of a person before and without the facts. You simply cannot do that and please God. Oh, and that's what God's Word does for me. It is a purifying flame, and it uh, will eliminate that uh, undue and unrighteous, uh, unfair judgment of my fellow man. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured unto you again. Then are you gracious in your assessment of the other person's disposition or attitude. This is what God's Word does for us, the fire of God's Word. But you know, we uh, rebel against the process many times, don't we? We pray for purity, and then we complain when God sends the fire. Oh, that's due to two elements, of course, within us. There is the sense of, of fear. Yes, sir. We, we don't like the fire. As a matter of fact, the uh, refiner seems cruel. Uh, the refiner is cruel, uh, that he may be kind. You see, it takes the refining process, the fire of God's Word, the girding up of my mind, and setting my affections upon the Lord. And then, of course, uh, secondly, the fear of loss. We don't like to pass through the fire because of the fear, friends, the fire of God's Word consumes only the dross. It does not affect the pure metal at all. I need to submit to the process. But you know, gold in the crucible, the refiner puts the 
ore in all of its ugliness with the mixture over into the crucible, and he applies the heat. Seven times he applies the heat. And in the process of refining and purification, there is the snapping and the cracking as if the gold is complaining. There, and then when the refining is finished, the sound and the agitation is gone. And the refiner looks over into the crucible and sees his own face mirrored in the pure gold. Friends, that's what the Lord wants to see in your life and mine. He wants to see his character mirrored in our souls, our lives, in our relationship one with the other. No, it isn't easy. He's made it very clear that it is a narrow gate that leads to a difficult way, that leads to life. It's through the fire of the refining Word of God that I become Christ-like in my relationship with my fellow man. May God help us in the study and application of His Word. If you would like a free cassette tape of today's program, you may contact us at Preaching the Gospel, Post Office Box 1484, Dalton, Georgia 30722. Or you may call us at the toll-free number on your screen or email us at ptgwjw at aol.com. Be sure to include the program number that you see now on your screen. If you would be interested in further Bible study in the privacy of your own home, you may contact us and we'll be happy to send you the first in this series of colorful Bible lessons. Preaching the Gospel is brought to you by the Churches of Christ in your area and is under the oversight of the elders at the Highland Church of Christ in Dalton, Georgia. We encourage you to visit a service of a local congregation as soon as you can. If you would like information on where a Church of Christ is located in your area, be sure and call us. We'll be happy to supply you with that. And now, back to my father. Christ is the great refiner, and he refines us through the heat of his word. The fire of God's word can remove the dross from my soul, from my life, enable me to be Christ-like in my attitude, in my relationship with my fellow man, and in my reverence and appreciation for God and His great gifts to humanity. There is no greater privilege than to walk in the illuminated pathway of the Son of God, having been purified in our obedience to His will. It is a purifying flame. Yes, there is some discomfort. Yes, I must focus on the proper goal in life. Indeed, I must put to death my members that are upon the earth. I must come to understand who I really am, a spiritual being that will live forever, and I need to make adequate preparation to be with God. May God help us so to do. You can reach Preaching the Gospel by calling 1-800-683-683. 3120. Be sure and join us next week at the same time for Preaching the Gospel with James Watkins.